What's going on guys? It's Kyle again with DTOM Knives and Gear. And today we have a really cool little knife to talk about. This is the Hinderer Half Track. This thing surprised me. It was sent in by my good friend and uh, wonderful support of this channel, my buddy Jeremy Freakshow underscore EDC. I will have his Instagram linked down below. As always, please go give him a follow. It's because of guys like him that I'm able to get a lot of these different knives on the channel. He also does really amazing uh, sharpening services, which you'll see on all the blades that, uh, that he has sent in because they all have his edge. So if you're looking for those kind of services, definitely hit him up. Links will be down below. Right. So I'm a Hinderer fan. I love Hinderer. I had the XM24. I still have my XM18, three and a half inch. Uh, they do a lot of things that I like. I like overbuilt knives. Um, I like the bigger ones, <coughs> which the three and a half inch is just around, just around that, that perfect size. The XM24 was the big boy. I really like that. I do not have that in my collection anymore, sadly. Uh, but it was the vintage model uh, that, uh, you know, 01 tool steel and the walnut handles. I probably will end up getting a, a regular XM24 eventually, but I haven't so far. But I do love Hinder. All American made product. Everything done in-house at Hinder. That's a huge deal. Now, they're very premium knives, and so they do come with a premium price tag. Uh, most of their models, like this and the XM24, XM18, XM, uh, around $425. So that's a lot that's just out of a lot of people's price range. And I get it. But it is one of those knives that is in the holy trinity or the companies that are in the holy trinity that we talk about on YouTube, which is Chris Reeve, Rick Hinder and Mick Strider. That's kind of gone by the wayside. You don't really hear about that anymore. I personally tried to get a knife from uh, all of those makers and I did a video on that and Hinderer was one of my favorites. I still have my Strider. I still have my Hinderer. I do not have my Chris Reeve anymore. Um, not, not to say they're not bad knives. It just wasn't my cup of tea. So Hinderer, right off the bat, I like because it's a Hinderer. Just for the reasons that I said. Very, very well built. Now, this one is in particular is the USA, made, uh, USA Blade exclusive with the Warncliffe Blade. This one was so popular. So popular. Now, I, if I am thinking about this correctly, it's an exclusive through them, and so they can make more. I don't see any on, uh, in stock right now, uh, but I do see some come up on the secondary market every now and again, so just keep your eyes open if you're looking for one of these. But I believe that they can make more, and there might be batches down the road. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. This one kind of went crazy, and people really loved this Warncliffe-style blade. And I like a Warncliffe, very utilitarian, especially for, you know, package opening, you know, cardboard, all that good stuff. And I just think that this is a good tool. It's just small, <laughs> okay, because I've got some big old hands. So how does it fit around my hand? I mean, my pinky's hanging off. Uh, but in this backed up grip, my thumb lands on the very well done jimping, unlike on some of the other uh, exo or the other models where the jimping is back here, not on the blade, like on the XM20 or 18, X, XM18, Jesus. Um, it's actually on the blade. That's really nice. They do have a full track, which is a much bigger model than this. Uh, and actually has the tool to take the knife apart that's in the backspacer. I actually thought about getting one of those at one point. Um, but it was kind of a, one of those things where it does have a fuller, as you can see, on the blade. But it is impossible to middle finger flick. And I'm basically got a rule now that I don't know if I'm going to buy a knife that I can't middle finger flick. Because it's just that important to me now. Um, I'm not going to really hold myself to that. But as of right now, I, it's one of those things. I decided not to buy the full track because of that. My window is open. And my neighbor has goats. So if you hear me in the background, it's not kids, it's goats. You got to be able to hear that. Sorry. Uh, but in Alabama, it's actually getting pretty hot. So the window's open. Uh, so anyways, this one in particular with the Warncliffe blade is really cool. It is a tank of a knife, even though it's small. And I believe the half track and the full track are actually named after tanks. 
I'm not a tank guy uh, or historian when it comes to that. But from what I understand, the half track is actually a tank. Uh, World War One era, I believe. But uh, that's cool. That's always, you know, the military stuff. You know, Rick Hinder, big supporter of our military, firefighter, EMTs, <clears throat> all those guys. Really, really appreciate that and appreciate him for what he does for those folks. But, uh, okay, so it's a Hinder, right? You've got a G10 inlay, titanium frame lock, uh, lock bar stabilizer, and the lock insert there. Your typical Hinder stuff. Regular oversized hardware, big old barrel spacers. There is your pocket clip. So it is very Hinder-esque. I mean, it has a lot of the Hinder uh, qualities. The ergonomics are just not the same as like on the XM18. To me, they're not the best. Um, and I can't get, you know, all of my fingers around it. So it's problematic for me. However, you know, cutting through cardboard and stuff, with this knife was actually pretty nice. And the reason I say that is because look at the angle of the Warncliffe. So a lot of Warncliffe's that you see, the handle and the blade kind of go in the same direction. This one is not, this one is canted. And I actually found that to be really nice when I was cutting cardboard to have this little angle here. Uh, and I didn't think it would be, but it was really nice to, to slice with uh, especially cardboard. That's really what I did with it. Um, in that angle. Surprise, surprise. It worked really well. This one has a very snappy action with the flipper tab. Like I said, you can't do the middle finger flick even though it has a fuller there. <laughs> I was really sad about that because I like to do that. You can't, it usually, uh, I like to grab the fuller. If I'm going to slow roll something, I like to grab the fuller and pinch it and roll it out. I can't even do that with this knife. Uh, so it is a flipper only deployment. That is it. But the flipper works amazing. It is not uh, a fall shut action, even though this one is running on bearings. Very light blade. So it is a shake shut. I found myself not even doing that. After I got done using this, I would just move my finger out of the way and just close it like a regular knife. This thing is a very good tool. It's small. But it is a tank. It is a tank just like all the rest of the hinderers that I have handled. And that is what I love about them. <coughs> so 20 CV blade, that's standard for what you're going to get from most of your hinderers in 390, 20 CV. They don't really use a lot of uh, S35VN anymore. So that's not a big, that's not an issue. You do have Jimpy just a little bit back here. It's not aggressive. Uh, you know, in a reverse grip, it actually feels really good because obviously with the four fingers, and I can keep my thumb right there if I wanted to. <laughs> so I didn't really use it in that grip, but it is very comfortable in that grip. And it is comfortable here. It's just not as comfortable as I would like unless it was a little bit longer. That's really my, my deal there. That um, does have a forward troll, kind of. Not for my sausagey fingers. Uh, I just don't feel comfortable putting my finger there. Uh, because the edge goes right up to there, and with my fingers, eh, it just didn't work. Uh, but this does, I said it was running on barriers, but it is on the triway pivot system, so you can choose to run the Foster Bronze, the nylon washers, or the bearings. I love that about the triway pivot system. I think it's one of the most innovative things that came has come out of a knife company in a long time. Uh, there has been a lot of cool stuff, but Hinderer... Uh, is the first one, and I think the only one that I've seen that you can do that with. I may be wrong, but I think that's amazing, and I love it. Uh, I know the full track has a compartment inside if you take the scales off where you can house that extra hardware. I am not sure about this guy. Uh, of course, it's not my knife. I'm not going to take it apart. Uh, however, Jeremy did say that I need to use these knives Every knife that he has is a user for him. And of course, he can put a wicked edge on those things. So I'm definitely going to do the cut test, even though I don't think I got it ready. I got the stuff down there, so we'll have to get it. Uh, but my experience with this blade is that it's a very good cutter. Now, it's also not the thinnest behind the edge. It is a flat ground blade with a little bit of a swedge. And this little swoop right here, uh, as far as ergonomics, does work good if I want to choke up like this. Uh, you know, the backed up grip where the jimping is is nice. 
Uh, but if I really want to get bare down, this swoop is really good and really comfortable for me to do that. So that's actually a really good feature that I just didn't talk about. Uh, <coughs> but there's your hinderer. Look at that edge. Oh my gosh, look at that edge that Jeremy puts on these. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and there is your 20 CV USA. Like, you know, or, however this goes. So <laughs> anyways, all in all, I like the knife. I'm not sure if it was something that I would buy because it is so small, because this definitely would be a tool for me, and it would be a backup blade. I mean, this would almost be the perfect, nice uh, box cutter. I mean, an expensive box cutter. <laughs> but this would be an excellent tool box cutter for something in like a shipping department or something like that. I think it would be awesome. If my phone is vibrating, I apologize. I keep forgetting to take this to... Um, do not disturb. So if you're hearing the vibrations, apologize. I'll try to remember to do that next time. So let's go ahead. Let me stop the camera so I can get all my cutting stuff available and uh, so we can do the cut test before we turn the camera around because I'm stupid. All right. I got it. Stupid. I always forget that. Let's see what it does to the cardboard. Holding in my nice grip there. Slices the cardboard really well. It is not a laser beam, but it slices, moves that material out of the way um, because of the full flat grind, but a very short blade. It only gets you know down to like 28 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty thick compared to a lot of other knives, especially in this size range. But yes, it still cuts that. Let's see what it does to the paracord. Paracord, easy peasy Japanesey. Now the twisted sisal rope. This is what I usually don't cut uh, loner knives with this stuff because it is so abrasive. But Jeremy told me, do it. Do the cut test. Love that man. So we are going to do it. Let's go ahead and see what it does with the twisted sisal rope. Damn. Okay, that, that worked out a lot better than I thought it was um, because of the way it did with the cardboard. So obviously... Cuts and it cuts well. Look at that clean cut right there. So box cutter, utility knife. Uh, this is going to be your high-end version of that. Uh, and I really, really like it. I mean, it, and it's a tank. I mean, it really is a tank. You want a well-built knife, man. Sorry, I'm putting my shit up. You want a well-built knife uh, to use and carry every day as that purpose, a box cutter? Really can't go wrong, but you're going to pay for it. I mean, these... Or $425. That's a lot of money. Uh, and size is never really an issue when it comes to, or shouldn't be an issue when it comes to value. Because the value in this knife is the fact that it's 100% USA made. It's got premium materials with G10, titanium, 20 CV steel. And it's just a tank, well-built knife that's going to last you forever. And your kids are going to use it and all this stuff. It, that's what makes this knife worth the money. So now let's turn the camera around and get some size comparisons because it's just not that big. Let's see how it compares to other staples that you're used to seeing and see what it really is like as far as size. Small. Alrighty. So get a little close up. Nicely done G10, as you can see, that does provide very good grip without being over aggressive. I really, really dig that. Nice cutout. Uh right here to you know if which doesn't really matter because it's a flipper uh it just exposes that fuller a little bit uh which is useless <laughs> so but uh you know typical hinderer hardware if this is the tumbled finish it might be the actual worker finish i'm still very unfamiliar with all that um but yeah very you know hindered pocket clip that you can change out still got some of my my pocket fuzz in there, <laughs> if I can get that out of there. And you can still use, you know, get aftermarket or the hinderer pocket clips and change this up, make it your own, all that good stuff. So, all right, so how big is this guy? Really, it's only about six and a half inches long, uh, which is way small for me. It does have a blind length of about 2.73 uh, with a two and a half inch cutting edge. So it's a well under the two or the three inch margin for those who live in communist states who can only carry knives under three inches. Fucking move. That's crazy. Call your legislators. Legislator. Legislators. Jesus. 
That's how mad it gets me with these stupid fear-based knife laws. Anyways, call them and get that changed because that is ridiculous. Uh, but yes, this knife would uh, would be fine in some of those states. Uh, you do have 160 thousandths blade stock on this guy, so it is the full thickness of like on the um, the XM18. And then, like I said, 28 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty thick. But as you saw in the cut test, it does cut well. Um, <coughs> this is the USA Made Blade version with a worn cliff, but they make uh, a Tonto version, a regular drop point. I can't remember exactly what they call them, so there are different options. This one is going to be harder to find because it wasn't exclusive, but I believe you can still find the actual half track in a few different retailers, uh, so just keep your eyes open there. It does have a handle length of 3.875, a handle width of about 1 inch and 1 eighth. The handle thickness is about 520 or so, so it's still a, you know a little bit of a chunky boy, but it's not like overly chunky. Uh, this right here, this kind of thickness doesn't bother me at all. I really enjoy it actually, especially for a smaller knife to fill my hand. Let's go ahead and see before we do size comparisons what this thing weighs, because yes, it's smaller, but it's still substantial. Four ounces. I think it's an excellent weight, a four ounce knife. I mean, yeah, as far as ratios are concerned, you know, ounce, ounce per inch or whatever, that's way off. But, uh, you know, for a small, you know, knife that is a tank, uh, utility blade for you to be able to use all day, every day for the rest of your life, <coughs> I think that would be a great weight to carry and it wouldn't really hinder m most people. Let's do some size comparisons. So let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco Para 3. A pair of three is about as small of a knife as I like to carry, and I have a couple of other options here that we're fixing to do, but as you can see, it is smaller than the pair of three. Um, as far as width-wise, it is going to be a little bit better in pocket. Um, now, with hinderers, you cannot replace the pocket clip. They, they probably have aftermarket. Somebody has aftermarket pocket clips that sit deep carry and stuff, I'm sure. Uh, but, of course, with a Spyderco, you definitely can. Uh, but... I mean, it's definitely going to be wider at its base, but as you can see, the flipper tab, you know, it's pretty substantial, but I'm glad that it's like that because it really makes for a wonderful flipping action. It just fires and rockets out with this push button method that I like to do. So yeah, you know, so it is smaller than the PM or the pair of three guys. Let's just go ahead and put it up against the XM18 just so you can get an idea there. So there it is against the XM18, such a smaller knife. Uh, as you can see and i love this size and then even you know the xm24 which is bigger than that i love it i love it i love it uh so this one yes is definitely a smaller knife i'm gonna go ahead and put it up against some of the other smaller knives that i have in my collection that i do like to carry this is the uh fair and forge stinger and as you can see the stinger is <laughs> even longer definitely a lot thinner of a knife I like the fact that this fills my hand out more, but with this really nice finger troll, I actually can choke up on this knife, and it's much more comfortable than something like this where the finger troll is just lacking. I get it. You've already got a small blade with a, you know, with the cutting edge already being pretty small, so if they were to make that, you would really lose a lot of cutting edge. I get it, but uh, definitely not something that I am crazy about. And then another knife compared to this knife in a few different ways. Not much on design and looks, but, <coughs> you know, this is another knife that is about as small as I like to carry, uh, but the actions are pretty pretty similar, even though this is a thumb stud. So this thumb stud rockets out of there, very, very nice, uh, but doesn't have a really good fall shut action. It is definitely a shake shut, uh, which is the same on this guy where it has a wonderful flicking action, and then the same kind of shake shut smooth but not fall shut at all kind of action uh so these things are similar in that but as you can see this is just right on the cusp of what i want to carry and this is just so much smaller than that so can i recommend this knife absolutely i can recommend this knife is it a great value i'm not going to say it's a great value uh but it's a hinderer and i will gladly pay hinderer prices because their products are just so well made um, the only reason I say that I don't think it's an excellent value is because there are other knives out there that are, uh, less expensive that I think you could get just as much out of. Um, however, the fact that this blade sh uh, is uh, angled like this, it really does make for a very good cutting experience. So, uh, you know, with that being said, what I recommend, yes, I would recommend this knife. 
um, especially in the uh, <laughs> in this Warney ver variation. The other ones probably work just fine, but I really do dig that. Uh, now that I've actually had it in hand, I probably, I, I know I would have never said mm -hmm. that until mm -hmm. I got it in hand. I probably would have never went with this blade shape, but now that I have, the fact that it's angled like that really, really works well. So if I had to pick one, it would be this. I'm sorry, guys, they are not in stock. I'm not sure if they're going to do another run of these or whatnot, but I do see them pop up on the secondary market. So keep mm -hmm. your eyes open and you might be able to find one. Jeremy, you are awesome. I really appreciate you uh, letting me borrow this knife and and figure it out because I would have never done that. And the fact that you sent it to me to, for me to check out just is awesome. I, I love you, brother. You are so good. Definitely check him out. Links in the description so you can go ask him about some sharpening services and then just follow him and say thank you for being such a great member of this community and allowing Kyle to check this out because, uh, you know, Kyle's a stupid guy, but we we still want to send them knives. <laughs> so I love you all. Stay safe in this crazy world that we are living in. And we will see you in the next one.